All right, like I said I would do, I wrote up that p-value thing right here. So do not reject because p is equal to 0 0.4036, which is greater than alpha. And let me just remind you all that you can do all this in StatCrunch. You don't even have to type the table in. I just did it in the last example because it, it, I find it convenient. But you can also do it here, t-statistics, t-sample. You've got a summary, and it comes up with this window, but you can go back to the problem or you can go back to Excel and see the numbers. Just click on this little Java screen and you want this one right here. Okay, so the means are, whoops, it would help if I could see it. There we go. <laughs> All right, come back. Okay, so the mean was 269, the standard deviation was 34, sample size 35. The other mean is 260, standard deviation is 53. Much more variability. And then standard sample size is 35. Unpool your variances. Next. And remember, that's how you do a confidence interval if you wanted one, but we don't yet. And then this is a not equal to. So I'm going to click calculate. And there you go, 0 0.4013, just what we said, right? more or less. There's a, there's a slight difference here. That's probably due to the fact that when StatCrunch does it, it doesn't do that smallest um, degrees of freedom thing. It actually does the true degrees of freedom, which is slightly different, but we're not going to get into um, it because it's a really complicated formula. So don't be surprised if this is just a tiny bit different from, from when the way we did it. It's not the end of the world. So if you like, you can copy and paste it anywhere you like. There we go. Cool. All right. So again, that difference in that, that's because this guy uses degrees of freedom of 34. And that's not really the degrees of freedom. That's kind of an estimate. And this one would use the exact degrees of freedom. Okay. We're done with that. Let me go back to the problem and see what else is worth our time. There we go. Okay, so we did this part. I, okay, and then the last part is a confidence interval, and I'm not going to do that again. It's the same stuff that we already did. So, And you can do it in StatCrunch. You can do it in Excel. And honestly, it's a little bit simpler because we did a two-tailed test, and two-tailed tests lend themselves very well to confidence intervals. All right, so that leads us to our last problem we're going to work on, which is number 13, which is up here, I think. There we go. Concrete strength. All right, so I'm going to need that data right there. So let me go grab it. And heck, I might as well grab it out of here. 11 to number 13 right here. There it is. And then I can copy and then go to Excel, grab a new tab, and paste it in. Easier than having to go find it in my Excel file somewhere. That crunch is just so easy. Okay, so there that is, and then let's see what they want us to do. Is it reasonable to use a Welch's test? Why? Normal probability plots indicate that the data are normally approximately normal, and box plots indicate that there are no outliers. So they're just telling us that. They're not bothering to show us the pictures of it. That's fine. So we can treat each sample as a simple random sample of all mixtures of each type. The samples were obtained independently. We're told that the normal probability plot shows that they're normal. So the answer to A is yes, because the samples are independently depend, independent and randomly obtained, right, the samples of concrete. Furthermore, we're informed that the data sets are both normal with no outliers. Technically, the populations from which the data is drawn, but that's fine. So those are the requirements of the Welch's t-test and that we have. It's the same requirements we saw in an earlier problem. All right, so the next thing they want to know they want us to actually conduct the hypothesis test, which is the only part I'm going to do, probably. And it says determine whether the mixture for the 0400 is, is stronger than the 0301. All right, so I'm going to make my null and alternatives, and I'll see you back here after those have been made.